So LLMs are a great way of shipping more code in 2025. Tools like DeepSeek, ChatGPT, and Agent Force are advertised to output more code. But do they work as advertised to help Salesforce developers with daily tasks? I put these models to the test to see how they help with the four most common tasks I perform. And if you don't know who I am, my name's Justin. I've been a Salesforce developer for five years and I make this content to help devs just like you. To be honest, I've been reluctant to introduce LLMs into my Salesforce workflow. While tools like V0 helped me build this scheduling component in a weekend, the Salesforce-based tools have been lacking. The issues I have faced in the past include using field names or relationships on objects that don't exist, missing required fields on test classes, and using lightning web component methods that just don't exist. But are today's tools any different? We can start off with a simple exercise. In this test, I'm gonna copy picklist values and turn them into a label value JSON object to use as options in a radio button. If I was doing this by hand, I would format using regex, but let's see how the LLMs perform. And all of them pass and quite quickly, so we're off to a good start. Let's turn up the notch and see if we can create lightning web components. In this test, we're gonna create a lightning web component that can edit the following fields on an account. Using this prompt, we get some code from the various models. When we dive deeper, we can see a few things when we go and perform the tests. With DeepSeek, it's compiled, it's working, but we're not closing the screen action after saving. With the O3 Mini, we are compiling and it's working and it's saving. With Claude, it is compiled, it's working, but I don't know what's going on here. We're not using a screen action. With Agent Force, I have no idea what's going on here. It's so wrong, I don't even know where to start. In this instance, we're getting a query where this isn't how querying works in Lightning Web Components. You very clearly need to have a controller inside of an Apex class. We have this star variable, uh, which I'm I'm not sure how we're how we're getting that, but that's that that won't compile. And we have this just straight SQL update where this is standard SQL and and wouldn't wouldn't run. Some of the other things this code is missing, we aren't using a uh, any HTML, so that's a component of Lightning Web Components. And we also don't have any XML to expose this. So that's also missing. One change that I would make is I would wrap all of these in a lightning quick action panel to help with the formatting, which these are missing, but I would say that they are at least serviceable to start minus agent force. With lightning web components really seeming to struggle here, let's go back to something a little bit more bread and butter, triggers. Let's say we have a product family called SLA. What I wanna be able to do is when an opportunity product is created, or updated, the total value of the line items with this SLA product family should be written to a custom SLA field total on the opportunity. And so when we go and generate this code, what we can see with DeepSeek is something interesting. First of all, we're using the opportunity product, which is the label and not the API name. We have this line item value field that doesn't exist. This should be family. Other than that, in theory, this would work. I would say that uh, this is a fail. There's too much that I would need to recode to be able to get this to work correctly. With Agent Force, we have the following trigger. This, I would say, almost works, except in here we're using a custom product family field instead of the standard family field. I actually prefer this solution the most as it's 30 lines in total and I think it's quite clean overall, but this does fail to use that standard field that is what I was prompting for. Something to note is that it does seem like the agent force model works better with code inside the editor rather than code given to the prompt. So we'll showcase that later on. With the O3 model, we get something interesting. The prompt that I gave seems to actually miss some use cases which O3 goes and solves for, which is quite interesting. Notably, we have these after delete and after undelete functions. 
And this would make sense because if we delete a line item, we would still want the total to update. Additionally here, we are using aggregate results, which I think is an interesting way of running this. Um, and so I would put this as passable. The final model would be Claude, which actually implements a trigger handler to go and abstract this logic out of the trigger. And if we go and open this, we can see once again a pretty complex way of su summing all of this up, but it works. Overall, I'd probably give this win to Claude as not only was this code generated, but we had an additional accompanying test class that passed and tests the code, which is very useful. That's exactly what we want. But no code can be deployed to production without test class. So let's actually see if we can automate one of the most tedious tasks, which is writing test classes. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this test class that Agent Force generated. We'll go and run this through the LLMs with the updated family field, and we'll go and see if we can get test classes generated. With DeepSeq, we once again get code that just doesn't compile. It's very strange stuff that we're doing here. And when we go and try to deploy it, you'll notice that it just doesn't compile. We're setting the total price on an opportunity line item, which would never work. We're not getting the ID. There's just so much wrong here and there's so many better options that I wouldn't even touch this. With Agent Force, we once again get code that would compile but wouldn't work. You can see here that we're setting the total price as opposed to the unit price. Now what's funny is that we can actually generate test classes inside the editor, one of the um, advantages of using Agent Force. And so while we can't go and generate test classes from a trigger itself, so cannot generate unit test because the current class doesn't contain a method. What we can do is we can go and generate from our Claude trigger handler. What we can do is we can generate an apex test on this method. With Agent Force, I was able to get the following test class, which ends up working out pretty well and does give us that 100% test coverage. With O3, I was able to successfully generate a test class, but we're once again setting that total price, and so this should not work. One of the problems we've run into with this test class is that the relationship for the opportunity line items is not quite right. I don't think this is unfixable, but it's certainly not the best when there's just other options available. The final model is Claude, and while the original test class did succeed, let's see if we can continue to keep that track record. When we scroll through the code, we can actually see that everything works as expected, and we can go and run this, deploy it. And when we run the tests, we end up actually getting a good test coverage with no failures. Overall, I would say Claude is going to be the best model for use. My bet for 2025, if money's no option, your best bet is Claude. One of the things we do see is that while Claude seems to be good for code quality, it's also the most expensive. And so it, does make it hard to justify if the costs are so prohibitive.